This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I honestly and earnestly give God the praise and thank him for all that he is to each of us. I'm Bishop Marcus A. Johnson Sr. and I'm your host today on the New Harvest Midday Inspirational Mealtime. And we are just grateful to God for this opportunity to come together and study God's living word. Living word for a living people for a present age. Let's pray now and ask God's blessings as we get into our lesson for today. Gracious God, we love you. We adore you. There's nothing we can accomplish without you, but with you, we can do all things through Christ Jesus who loves us. Thank you, God, for now almost three years you have allowed us to come together from near and far, not just in this region, mid-Atlantic, but God across the Atlantic, across the waters, oh God, in Europe and in the continent of Africa and through these United States and even beyond. We thank you for what your wisdom has done. Through a pandemic, you've allowed us to increase and to expand. So we trust you as we search hard after your word that you will open up our understanding and give us an appreciation for what you are doing in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Our theme, living to see increase, meaning I'm not going to quit, not going to throw in the towel. I'm not going to die. I'm going to press on regardless of the obstacles so that I can see God bring forth not just life, but that more abundantly. Our series, The Study of Psalms, Book 2. Now, if you're just joining in, we, let me just bring you up to speed. We have understood now that the book of Psalms, 150 Psalms, have been divided according to the Pentateuch, or the five books of the law. There were Jewish scholars that divided it up. Each book does not represent a specific theme, but it was divided up accordingly. The Psalms represent hymns and poems that were used in the Jewish worship, in the wilderness, in the tent, as well as in Solomon's temple when they sang these songs and glorified God. The Psalms represent a myriad of moods and, and emotions from sadness to ecstatic joy. And we all experience all of those different emotions. And so the Psalm speaks to it. But what is the theme of Psalms? Praise, praise, or the praiseworthiness of God, that God is worthy of all of our praises. Regardless of what circumstances present themselves to be, God is worthy of praise, and he's always the answer. Not just for the older people, not just for the middle age, not just for the young, but even for the children, the babies. We all need to recognize the praiseworthiness of God and give him the praise. Our lesson for today, we talked yesterday about why am I depressed? Why am I depressed? And the psalmist suggested to us reasons for being depressed or being downhearted. Today, we're going to look at recommendation for depression. Recommendation for depression. What do I do when I'm depressed? I want to repeat two uh, definitions or an identification and then a definition for the word depression. The, this particular psalm that we're studying, Psalms 42, was written by the sons of Korah or the Korahites. These were Levites descendants of Levi, who served as musicians in the wilderness, tabernacle, and Solomon's temple. They were musicians. you got to get this under your belt because Psalms 42 and 43 will make sense when you understand this is a musician that's writing this. And I should say a worshiping musician, a worshiping musician who has been cut off from the location of the worship, cut off from Jerusalem, separated for whatever the circumstances. And now the, 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 the son of Korah is now lamenting the fact that he cannot be in the place of worship among the corporate gatherers 
to praise God who is praiseworthy and that it is a privilege to praise God. The uh, son of Korah who is writing this song is expressing the emotion of depression. What is depression? This is not a clinical definition. This is a general definition I'm giving it. And let me just footnote this as a disclaimer. If anyone is experiencing an extreme level of depression and you need help, reach out for help. You get professional help, you dial 911, or you go to someone and share where you are so you can get support. There's some things in life we don't need to go through alone. And so don't try to handle it on your own if you need the help, all right? But I'm giving a general definition with more of a spiritual focus. Depression is characterized by circumstances or situations that have a negative causative impact upon a person's mood or temperament that fluctuates up and down. And we all deal with it because depression is one of the emotions that are a part of a human experience, a human experience. Now let's get into our lesson. Let's put this in perspective. Recommendation for depression. What do you do when you are experiencing depression? Psalms 42 and 5. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Let's get into this right now. Highlight number one. Highlight number one. The psalmist's recommendation for depression is to challenge oneself. Challenge yourself. Ask yourself some questions. Put yourself under an inquisition. Listen, if you are experiencing depression, put yourself to a challenge. Psalms 42 and 5 again. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Ask yourself a question. Why do I feel like this? And why art thou disquieted in me? Why do I feel so low and so glim? Why? You need to identify the causation of it and ask the Holy Spirit to give you revelation as to what's going on with you. By the way, it could be physical. By the way, it could be physical. If you're not getting the proper rest, if you're not eating a balanced diet, if you've got something going on in your body or something going on in your relationships, all of this can impact our well-being. So, but challenge yourself. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? I'll stop there. I'll stop there. Here's the insight. Whereas one can accept the emotional rides that trouble brings, and I should say roller coaster rides, or one can ask, why am I giving my emotions authority over me. Ask yourself that. Now, it's one thing to have the emotion. That's not wrong. But now, what we allow that emotion to do could be the difference between what is innocent and what can become sinful or harmful. All right? So, whereas one can accept the emotional roller coaster rides that trouble brings, or one can ask, why am I giving my emotions authority over me. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Tip number one, let's remember our soul has a will and will take over if we do not choose to be led by the Spirit of God. Our soul has a will and it will take over if we do not choose to be led by the Spirit of God. Remember, we are spirit, soul, and body. And our soul consists of our thoughts, our will, and our desire. And so we've got to put it in check. Romans 8, verses 12 to 14. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Our soul needs to be led. It needs to be led. Highlight number two. 
Highlight number two. The psalmist's recommendation for depression is to speak hope to oneself. To speak hope to oneself. Challenge yourself. Ask yourself questions. But then after you've asked yourself, why am I feeling like this? Why am I cast down like this? Then begin to speak hope to yourself. Psalm 71 verse 14. But I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. Listen, if we don't, the Bible says um, that without hope, we kill the soul. We kill the soul. So we want to make sure that we always have a sense of expectation for the next, for the next day, the next moment, the next hour, that we always have an expectation, no matter how gloomy things might be for the moment, that there's always an expectation that the sun is going to shine again, knowing who we are and whose we are, and knowing that God thinks thoughts of us of peace and not of evil, and to bring us to a blessed destination, we must speak hope to oneself. Insight number two, whereas one can allow their emotions to dictate their behavior or choose to dictate the will of God to their mind and emotions. So either our emotions will talk to us or we can talk to our emotions. It's God's will that we talk to our emotions. But when we speak to our emotions, we dictate to our emotions according to the will of God, not just my ideas or my thoughts, but the will of God. That's what Jesus did in the wilderness. Jesus specified, it is written, and he spoke concerning the will of God, which is the word of God. And that's how we deal with our emotions, especially those runaway radical emotions. Lamentations 3, verse 21 through 24. Listen to this. Listen to the scriptures speak to my emotions, to my soul. This I recall to mind. Therefore have I hope. I'm remembering something. Here it is. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions, they fail not. Doesn't that give you hope? They are new. His compassions, his mercies, they're new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. That's the praiseworthiness of God. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. Whatever I'm going through, my hope is in God. And because he's faithful, you can count on God to be God all the time. Then I have hope in the faithfulness of God. Tip number two, let's remember one speaks hopelessness by thinking hopeless, but speaks hope by thinking hope. Let me repeat that. One speaks hopelessness by thinking hopeless. Hopeless thoughts will be the result of speaking hopelessness. But if we speak hope, it's because we're thinking hope. So what you think is what you're going to speak. Out of the abundance of the heart doth the mouth speak. Proverbs 23 and 7. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. So we've got to make sure that we are thinking the word of God. We're thinking hopeful things so that we see the result of what we're thinking, what we're speaking, what we are then creating, and what we're producing for our own lives. Oh, praise be to God. Praise be to God. So the psalmist is telling us that if we're dealing with depression, challenge yourself. Ask yourself questions. Then it's saying, speak hope to oneself. Speak hope to oneself. Psalms 43 and 5. Notice now, Psalms 42 and 5. Psalms 42 and 11. Psalms 43 and 5. The psalmist the, the, starts off the same way with each of these. Why art thou cast down? O oh, my soul, and why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. Highlight number three. Highlight number three. 
the psalmist's recommendation for depression is to offer praise unto the Lord. Now, let me just start off by saying, you're not going to feel like it. This has got nothing to do with what we feel. This has got everything to do with the conviction of our heart, what we believe, that God is always praiseworthy. And if you're stuck in a ditch, then you may need a tow truck. You need a tow truck to do what? To pull you out. Well, guess what? Praise is a tow truck. When you're stuck and can't get yourself out, praise will pull you out. Oh, yes, it will. Psalms 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. That's what I've got to practice. I've got to practice blessing God. I've got to practice bestowing upon God what he deserves. And that's the fruit of my lips, offering God words of oblation, words of honor, words of, 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 of thanksgiving, offering it unto God. It's a tow truck, y'all. It'll pull us out of the ditch every time. It certainly will. Insight number three. Listen to this. Whereas one can maintain a downward self perspective due to their circumstances, one can maintain a downward self perspective due to the circumstances. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. That's a downward perspective. And you can maintain that as a result of your circumstances. Or have a praise that looks upward beyond oneself unto the Lord. One of the things about depression, depression normally focuses on the circumstances and oneself. But praise takes the focus off of me and it puts it on the one who is worthy of all the praises. And one way to get out of a depression is stop thinking about yourself and start thinking about the Lord and start thinking about the things that are on the heart of God. So one can maintain a downward self-perspective due to their circumstances or have a praise that looks upward beyond oneself unto the Lord. Praise doesn't look down. Praise looks up. Psalms 121 verses 1 through 2. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Praise makes me look up. My help coming from the Lord, which made heaven and earth, which makes God praiseworthy. So I give him the praise. I give him the glory. I give him the honor. Saints, even if you can't verbalize it, then think it. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I get a praise. My soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Never allow yourself to stay in a, the quagmire of darkness and depression and, 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 and underperformance and failure and, and disappointment. That's not a place to park. No, 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 no. Don't even stand in that location. You know how you see the traffic sign? No parking here. No standing in this location. Don't even stand there. Because if you do, you'll find yourself becoming confined to that environment. No, you've got to move on. And the way you move on is with praise. Tip number three. Let's remember our emotions will follow the direction of our praise focus. Praise must have an object. And wherever we identify the object of our praise, that's where our emotions are going to go. Now, if the focus is dark, then our emotions are going to go dark. But if our focus is light, then our focus, our emotions are going to go light. And so we've got to understand that we have a choice in this. We don't have to just let it happen. No, we can decide I will not have a runaway emotion. No, my emotions will be used to determine the temperature of where I am. Then I will use, as we said in Sunday, the thermostat to reset that temperature and put it where it needs to be. Psalms 24, verse 9 through 10. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. I'm lifting my head up because I want my emotions to rise. And even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Because God inhabits the praise of his people, and God's going to lift us if we lift him up. Who is the king of glory? 
the Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Selah means stop and meditate. It's almost like a, a, a message in a musical score. It's saying pause, stop, and think about it. Psalms 42 and 5. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God. That's enough right there to go off into a praise. For I shall yet. That means in spite of what's happening, I shall yet praise him for the help, H-E-L-P, of his countenance. Highlight number four. The psalmist's recommendation for depression is to look at the Lord's countenance. Look at the Lord's face. Stop looking in the mirror. Stop looking in the mirror. Stop looking at other sad faces. Look at the Lord's countenance. How do you do that? You look into the word of God. You will see the face of God. I'm talking spiritual talk now. Hebrews 12 and 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Looking unto Jesus. He authored this whole thing, and he's finishing it. <laughs> From beginning to end, Jesus. Insight number four. Whenever the downcast looks upward into the face of Jesus, they experience a lift in their own countenance from the blessed assurer. You know how we say blessed assurance? Well, who gives us the assurance? The assurer. That's Jesus himself. Jesus himself, he assures us of our blessedness. Whenever the downcast look upward into the face of Jesus, they experience a lift in their own countenance from the blessed assurer. Oh, he will bless us. Oh, yes, he will. When we look in his face, when we see the, the will of God, when we see the pleasure of God, when we see the joy of the Lord, because that's our strength. When we see that God delights in us, it will lift us. When we recognize that God loves us with an everlasting love, that's looking in his face. You look in his face. You know, you can look in somebody's eyes. You can look at the expression on their face and you can tell what's going on inside of them. Well, when we look in the word of God, we can tell what's going on inside of God. Lord, have mercy. Psalms 3, verses 3 through 4. But thou, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of mine head. Who will lift my head up? God will. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. And then it says, Selah, stop, meditate, dwell on this, think on this. The Lord is the lifter up of mine head. Lift up your head. Lift it up. Tip number four. Let's remember, during seasons of depression, we can select our altitude within or beyond the range of depression by our attitude. Let me say that again. During seasons of depression, we can select our altitude. We can select how low or how high we're going to go within or beyond the range of depression. We can choose, I'm not going to be low down within the range of depression. I'm going to be higher. I'm going to be beyond the range of depression. How do I do it? By determining my attitude. And my attitude then becomes a thermometer to set my emotions, to reset it, to set it in praise, to set it in worship, to set it in thanksgiving, to set it in gratitude. Come on, somebody. To set it with joy, Joy unspeakable and full of glory. And to get there, you've got to look unto Jesus. Hallelujah to God. This is what happens when we allow our attitude to reset the thermometer so that our altitude is raised beyond the limit of depression. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 10. We are troubled on every side. Okay, reset, yet not distress. We are perplexed. Reset but not in despair. Persecuted, reset, but not forsaken. Cast down, reset, but not destroyed. Always.
bearing about in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus, we are always mindful of the cross that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. We die so Christ's life can live in us. We're always mindful of the fact I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. But Christ liveth in me in the life that I live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave his life for us. Here's our final takeaway. Our final takeaway. No believer is immune from life's disappointments and pain that can cause our emotions to plummet. Life can do that. However, every believer can choose to spiritually address depression by challenging the reason for being depressed. Ask yourself the question, why am I down here? Then speaking hope to oneself. You may be there for a legitimate reason, but now don't stay there. Speak hope to yourself. And then offering praise to God. It's going to lift you. And then looking unto Jesus. Look at his countenance. And his countenance not only will be a help to us, but it will be the health, H-E-A-L-T-H, the health, the well-being of my countenance. Looking at Jesus will help me to fix my face. My father used to tell us that as little kids, we walked around the house and we had a long drawn out face. He didn't let us walk around the house with attitudes and, and can't smile and don't speak, can't talk. We couldn't do that growing up in my house. My father would say, fix your face, fix your face. Well, if you look unto Jesus, then looking at him will fix our face. Hallelujah. It will fix our face. Let me close with the words of this beautiful hymn. His eye is on the sparrow. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Let not your heart be troubled. His tender word I hear, and resting on his goodness, I lose my doubts and fears. Though by the path he leadeth, but one step I may see. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow. That's a little bird. And I know he watches me. Whenever I am tempted, whenever clouds arise, when songs give place to sighing, when hope within me dies. I draw the closer to him. From care, he sets me free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Recommendation for depression. Challenge yourself. Ask yourself a question. Why am I here? Then speak hope to yourself. And then offer praise unto the Lord. And then look at the Lord's countenance and fix your face. Let us pray. Father, we thank you now. Oh, we thank you that depression may come, but it doesn't have to rule over us. We thank you that you provided for us both in the natural and the spiritual a way to address these emotions. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise and we thank you for all that you have done and are doing. Lead and guide us and receive our praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Please comment before you sign off. Hit that like button. Say something. Say something before you sign off so that we can appreciate in the sharing. And then tune in tomorrow as we continue on our study in the book of the Psalms. God bless you and heaven smile upon each of you in Jesus' name.